Hey everybody, and welcome back to Ready Steady Play, where we're just going to do a rundown of our final thoughts on Resident Evil 2, the board game. Biohazard. Biohazard 2. Scary mutants. Yeah. <laughs> that one to lick your face. So, uh, just uh, to give you a quick uh, <laughs> overview, if you haven't played it already, it's a scenario-based campaign game that can be played where individually, so you play an individual scenario and get a section of the story, or you play through all eight scenarios in order to develop the whole story over the course of the game. The scenarios themselves take the form of sort of like a miniature dungeon crawler-esque experience, which is based around the concept of survival horror, so you're limited in how aggressive you can be, and it's more about trying to survive and collect items to solve the uh, the sort of... The puzzles. No, it's not puzzles, though. It's obstacles, right? Um, it's, in yeah, Resident no, Evil, it's it more puzzles. puzzles yeah. But in the board game, I, there are no puzzles. Yeah, they're simplified. Uh, it's Well, it's basically like find the tokens to uncover the key. Yeah. You yeah. know? Um, but, it's, it's not a puzzle, really. I mean, the no. only thing you're doing is calculating sort of probabilities. Correct pathing options. Yeah, pathing most options? efficient pathing. Pa pa pathing? Pathing? Um, so, uh, we've got an interesting level of sort of experience here at the table, because all he knows Resident Evil quite well, so do I. I think he's played Resident Evil 2 more recently than I have. I mean, I played it a long time ago, so how long back are we going for you? I played it when it came out. I played it after it came out, because it was my brother's. So, yeah. I forget how much older than me you are. Michael has no experience of Resident Evil or the universe at all. I know. Apart from scary posters at the trailers at the cinema. And that, that Resident <laughs> Evil really or, has nothing to do with the Resident Evil we're playing now. Yeah, or, True. or adverts for the game on television. However, I do know how to scare the bejesus out of you now. It's to take you to Japan where they've got a live biohazard experience. Why the, the hell, hell in London? Did yeah. you see that? that yeah. was, I missed it. Why the hell would someone want to do that? Because terror is exciting. Terror is I can thing. think of ter loads more terror, is terror, terror horrible things to do <laughs> than that. Okay. Yeah, like murdering a bunch of dogs. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Failing to murder a bunch of dogs with a shotgun. <laughs> so the... I wasn't really sure what to expect from this game. I kind of backed it for two reasons. I backed it because I wanted to get it on the channel, and I backed it because I like Resident Evil 2 a lot. Mm. I was hesitant because I didn't think that uh, Steamforge Games did a good job of delivering Dark Souls. Um, which I still haven't got all of the Dark Souls stuff. And what I noticed oh, yeah. with this was that everything came at once. So while I'm still waiting for my Dark Souls stretch goals, four years later, I'm... Way to date the episode. Yeah, so uh, yeah. if we've got our Dark Souls stretch goals, you know that this came out sometime before 2020. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, they, they delivered all of this at once, so that was better. So they may have learned their lesson. They may yeah. have learned their lesson. On the other hand, I don't think this was as well produced as Dark Souls. Do you think it was a little rushed? Well, mm. I think that the actual production quality of the components is very hit and miss. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. So For I think, me... I think, um, do we want to talk about production quality first? Yeah, let's yeah. do that, because there was one thing I mentioned to you earlier... That I really don't like. It's it's a bit of, it's a bit anal for me. I realize. I love how this is oh. the first thing you're going to pick up on. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah, it's but just, I, you can tell I how much this this this, yeah. this boss token that you counts down a dial. It's a dial. I remember that now. It's a boss dial. Yep. Uh, the rotating boy. And now there's obviously a hole. <laughs> the rotating thingy. Um, now, as you can see, there's obviously a rotating number sequence here. Now, what I can what I hate, hate. is that. It has numbers showing at either side. It's yeah. too wide. So there's it's no... Too it's too, too it, this uh, is It's too wide. Deeply unpleasant looking for me. <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> Your anal retentiveness is I blaring. I find that very amusing. I didn't like how when we run out of ammo, there's no zero. I so there's no zero to put it on. You're either on one ammo, at, or you've just got to kind of stick it between two and results. Exactly. And on this one... And, and on the handgun, one, yeah. it's like there's nowhere to put it. So you're just you're like... On 15 on uh, one. <laughs> so you just kind of have to jam it. Because otherwise, because otherwise, it looks like you have one bullet forever. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, I just flipped them upside down and went right. That's that was it. a good thing to do, Ollie. I saw you do that. And I can't yeah. Wait. So you just flip them upside down, show that you're out of ammo. It doesn't so tell you to do that. Yeah, it's, it's not elegant. Um, and uh, I think that kind of sort of lack of attention to detail is quite pervasive throughout the entire production quality of the game, because the 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 door tokens. The do we door, have them? Um, oh. I can get them. Uh, yep. So we've got some stuff here. So there's. I would. I would point out that these doors are a twelve pound expansion pack, and these uh, corpses, typewriters, 
Magic Chests and Ink Ribbons are another £12 expansion pack. So that's £24 you're paying just for this stuff, right? Which is not... Which is not... I mean, these are actually great. When I got these and I realized they opened, which they have to based because of the way the game plays, mm. um, I, but I, I didn't know that at the time. I was really impressed. I mean, this is actually a really nice component. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I, I think that the doors are well worth the money. These, I think, are probably a bit less worth it. But so the, the corpse and the typewriter become these, you know? And, I mean... Hard to distinguish. Yeah, kind of hard to distinguish. You know, kind of indistinct. But then the door tokens become these, you know? And uh, those are closed and these are open, you know? And you have if to... If you can tell. If, if you, you can, can tell. tell. Hey, that's so dark. And bear in mind here, we're under, like, a YouTube lighting set lighting like when you're in a room and especially if it's not a very well lit room these are so difficult to look at and then it's just made so much worse by how dark these tiles are there's i mean i'm actually really shocked about how clear this is and that's because we've got all the, the the lights on but when we were looking at these before we started filming it was so hard to look at these tiles they were so dark. That's probably one of the and better then, ones too. And actually, this is probably that you picked out. yeah. There's, there's there's some there's some really, really obscure like the twos are really difficult. Yeah, these yeah. two tiles are really difficult. I mean, I'm actually amazed by how much detail I can see on this camera right well, now. Well, this this one um, you can see two two tiles and then a bit basically this bit's in darkness. But even when I look at this on the viewfinder of this little camera here, it looks a lot more clear. Whereas if I'm looking at it just past the camera here it looks really indistinct and hard to see, even though it's under these big bright lights. Mm. And when I look at it through this viewfinder, I don't know, I think it's because of the light of the actual viewfinder, I can see it more clearly. Yeah. But like then when you've got these tokens on it, you know, and then this door here, and it's just, it's all so dark, you know, and it just looks really bad. Looks a bit clumsy. Which is really funny because the item, for comparison's sake, it's quite bright, but again, it's sort of hard to tell what this is actually depicting. It's depicting your item bag with a light coming out of it. Mm. Um, but, you know, they needed to make these different colors because you can't see the A and the B on them, although it is there. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's just, it's very, very, very difficult to look at. The, the other thing as well with regards to the rooms is when you're set, you're trying to set up the scenario and... <laughs> and these are walls. <laughs> <laughs> When you're setting up the scenario and you're obviously trying to try and find these tiles, and obviously this is a this is a amber room, uh, amber room, sorry, and a yellow room, it is really really difficult to distinguish what this room should be. Yeah, like what uh, tile do you use? For yeah, that? do you just pick a random one? six-sided one? And yeah. if you pick a random six-sided one, it's like that just makes you feel like all the art on the tiles is completely superfluous. And, yeah. and yet, on this amber one, you can tell that it's like the office because you can, you can sort of like kind of make out distinguish the table yeah. and some chairs. So, so if they're going to go to the effort of trying to distinguish that one... But I think it's just because of the printing. I think it's just because of the image they printed on this tile happens to show through the graphic they've overlaid on it. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, like this room and that room, completely indistinguishable. How confident are you you even got these rooms the right room? I'm fairly confident because I spent 18, a lot of time five, looking at 90, it. But I'd these say. two were total guesses. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean, the six tile ones. I don't know where the other one is. We've put it away now. Oh, well, and they're double sided. Yeah. yeah. So there's no way to know which one it is. But what happens is, because you can't really make out a lot of the details when you're looking at it, it gives all of the arenas this kind of really indistinct feel. You know, you don't really feel like you're not. And the red lines that form the borders are so bright. You don't really feel like you're, you're in a, a real space. You feel like you're just kind of looking at a board, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? Um, so it doesn't help to support the theme. Which, um, is, which is a shame, really, because some of the artwork is quite nice, and it does it does remind you of scenes from the game. Like, if you're, mm -hmm. if you're familiar with the game, this this tile here, that's the walkway... The, this is almost a bang-on yeah, it's, creation. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing. But then you go... They've gone to the effort of, recre of recreating the scene very well in terms of the boss fight and the tile itself. But you're only going to use it for this one boss fight. Yeah, and... After that, it's like, oh, this is just a generic tile. And it seems weird that they've gone to that effort to do it, but then spoiled it by making it almost impossible for you to correctly lay out the scene. Mm. And I don't, I don't understand. It's almost like they had two different goals in mind when they were doing it. All right, so I, th I feel like we have been relatively negative about this artwork. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, and to be... I mean, um, compare that to the card, though. Yeah, so then I was going to say, but the card on the the art on the cards uh, is pretty good. I mean, these are not particularly special, 
But uh, there's uh, the the I like the player board with the the help tracker. That's yeah, straight yeah. out of the video game, and that's I like cool. That. I like that. Yeah. I I the I think PC artwork's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. The characters are cool. And, um, and these cards are very easy to understand. Mm. That's pretty straightforward. Yep. Yeah. Right. And so I think uh, having complained a bit about the art now, I've got a bunch of sort of things I'd like to say in real life. But the first thing I'd like to say is that I enjoyed the gameplay. Yeah. Yes. I, I I actually once we got set up and got into it, it was it was thinky but not too thinky. It was fast. Um, it was, it was that, fairly that, simple. That, that's exactly what I was going to. That was my first impression of it. Actually, at how um, how easy the playthrough is with the, the actions that you take. Uh, it's very quick, um, and I didn't think it was difficult to pick up either. It's a good level of stressful too. Yeah, it's yeah. a good level of stressful. It's it's difficult. It's not super difficult. Um, it's not super easy. I mean, we breezed through scenario one, and then we got our butts handed to us by scenario five. And I think that's as it should be, because you want a good escalation of difficulty. Correct. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've got some... Some... Con- uh, not concerns. I wonder how reflective the attack dice are and the dodge dice, because it's the same die, are of how hard it should be to do damage, because... I understand that the normal hit for the handgun isn't going to kill them because you're hitting a, the wrong part of them, but it knocks them back. But it did feel very limiting and it was very frustrating run, throwing a lot of dice and just doing nothing. And I, I don't know if maybe one more face having a success or some, some kind of cumulative effect where currently you either get this or if you do this they can add up to that because it's two shots rapid Mm. and maybe that would have made it feel a little bit less um, a little bit less of an uphill struggle when you empty an entire clip into a very Mm. easy target and just do nothing because that that was very frustrating I did feel like they tried to make the difficulty of the enemies it felt for for a game that's really about sort of management and survival horror it felt Mm. really swingy and yeah. I think that these dice are a big part of that because right. sometimes you could roll really well and just nail it, and sometimes you couldn't, and that didn't feel right because in Resident Evil, you it never the, the the hit points of the zombies were not randomized. Like you would expend bullets and you'd get a return. Mm-hmm. Like to be fair, you could miss, um, yeah. or you could uh, get headshots, which would be better. But if you were decently, if you were pretty decent at the game, then you you knew when you shot, you would almost. Always, and because it was so important as well, yeah. you could almost like take your time to line up. Like the zombies weren't fast. It yeah, was never stumbled. a moment where, it, yeah, it was. It, they stumbled around, so it was a lot more about sort of choosing your moments to attack rather than worrying about whether yeah. or not the attack would have an impact. Yeah. Whereas this felt a lot more like we were choosing our moments to attack because ammo was limited, but then we also had to worry about whether or not the ammo would have any effect. effect. Yeah. And that was that didn't feel quite right. That felt yeah, very punishing. It, it felt, I mean, well, if it didn't go well, it felt very punishing. Like when um, my grenade launcher failed to do any damage, yeah. that didn't feel right. Yeah. Um, you know, but maybe I'm just forgetting all the times I missed with the grenade launcher in Resident Evil. I suppose that's the thing, because, I mean, ultimately, when you're trying to recreate a game that you have freedom to attack basically in any angle. I mean, I know Resident Evil 2 wasn't that great for aiming, mm. but trying to do that on a board game is difficult and they, they're trying to balance how good it should be versus how bad you should be at doing it mm, mm-hmm. but with ammo being scarce without you, sort of over complicating it as yeah. well you know like they could have put in a lot of mechanics for like headshots and yeah. tracking wounds and maybe if you pushed a zombie if you got pushed back on a zombie like four times it died but yeah. that gives you all this extra admin to track and it yeah. takes away the punchiness and the flow of the game so you're trying to balance that 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 speed that we like yeah. with, yeah. you know, capturing the essence of the game. And I do think they did a good job. And they put in yeah. sort of little nuanced things like, you know, when, you, um, when you're when you attacked at range zero, so there's an enemy in your space, mm-hmm. and it attacks you, if you take a wound, then you can push the enemy back a space. Yeah. And that little rule really captures if uh, the elements of the game when an enemy would jump at you and attack you, and yeah. you push it off you, um, which was... Some, so there were... I thought it captured... A lot of the things I really like about Resident yeah, Evil yeah. quite effectively. Without mm-hmm. a doubt. I mean, it's it's uh, for me. I don't know if maybe they tried that and it went. This makes it too easy. It was frustrating, but overall, it was it was 
a fairly reliable mechanic to understand. Like you, you, you know, you go, I need this symbol. If I fail to roll this symbol, or better, mm. I have failed. Once we started, it was quite a compelling experience. Yes. I think that's because it was so fast, you know? Yeah. The speed of it really does it a lot of service. Just, yes, 100%. You know, there's, because that. once you're set up, there's not what a lot really of downtime. Like yeah. And I really, really like that. That's super compelling. Right. And one, and you know, once we were out, I was like, I want to go again, you know, and we can because it's all set up. And the way the campaign works is that if you have continues left, yeah. you can start over and go again. So it sort of facilitates that. Here's what I didn't really like. Um, how long it took to set up. And this comes oh back to the artwork. Yes. The setup and takedown time of this game is, is egregious. Long. It's long. such a long time to set up. And it's because everything is on these tiny little tiles. And they've tried to make it so modular so that they can set up all of the scenarios out of the box. Mm. But because the artwork is bad, because there's so many tiles, it takes such a long time to set up a scenario. And if you're playing through a campaign, that would be such a killer. If you're used to this really punchy gameplay and then you have to stop, you have to do the campaign admin, then you have to set up the next scenario, I really feel like that would kill there's the mood. There's so much to set up. There's the board to set up. There's the doors to set up there's the typewriters to set up yeah there's all the, the item decks need to be set the up the tension deck needs to be set up yeah exactly. you know and you're searching through decks of cards looking for the right cards and that yeah. wouldn't be so bad if it wasn't also for the board which takes so much time to set up and you're staring at this thing trying to find the right tiles and that's just so, so time consuming yeah i mean you, you glossed over this a little bit but i think the ink ribbons as well and the the typewriters. I love that they imported that from the game. Yes, I I, I thought the reference to it was amazing. Completely lost on you. Completely. Understandably, amazing. I thought this is amazing. Yes. What do they do? And it's just shuffling the the tension deck again. But which, I quite like that. No, no, which I liked mm. because I like the idea that it's like you you are adding to the game, and then the the they've also got a continue mechanic, which is you start off with so many continues. So if you get wiped. You can just set back up again, which unfortunately adds extra to the setup time. Mm. But but I have quite mixed feelings about that. Yeah. Because on you know, because if I'm sitting down to play the eighth scenario campaign and I lose a couple of games if I lose if we run out of continues by scenario six, yeah. Then the game's like, and now you just have to restart. And now you just die. Um and I don't remember Resident Resident Evil Two never actually had a like full game over where you had to restart what it would have is the no. save mechanic so you'd save yeah. the game as you went through with the ink ribbons and if you died you would begin again from your last save point and by by rationing the the ring ink ribbons you had yeah. it forced you to make difficult decisions about when you saved the game and how much progress you tried to make before you saved the game which yeah. made the fights and the running around and the exploration so much more tense because you don't know if you're about to hit a boss fight you don't know if you're about to hit a really hard puzzle that Takes you forever the first time, but once you know how it's done, exactly. So, like, so for example, you might spend two hours playing trying to solve a puzzle, but once you've solved the puzzle, if you have, if you die and have to do that again, you might do it in ten minutes because now you've got the solution. Mm -hmm. But what happens here is that they don't. So the the I like the way they implemented the ink ribbon because mm -hmm. implementing a full save mechanic in the you don't need to yeah. in the middle of a scenario. It doesn't take so long to play the scenarios that you have to stop save the game to stop and come back. Mm. So then it's like you would only actually want to save your progress between scenarios. But then that's not actually tied into the way the ink ribbons work. You just have continues. Yeah. Um, and I don't think you had limited continues in Resident Evil. No, I'm pretty sure. It was sure, just I'm the ink ribbons, sure just, wasn't it? Yeah. The, I mean, the, so that feels a bit at odds. The only thing I kind of felt a bit mixed feelings over, I know you liked it because it was fast for the gameplay, I felt like the tension deck we got through so quickly. And I don't know how yeah. much of that was us just not paying enough attention to I it. Think, I think that was because we, we we jumped to a very difficult scenario mm. and skipped the intermediate scenarios. Well, it's, it, I mean, we did do that. We, we, but we I mean, it's do, our own fault. Do, too. Yeah, but we didn't do the level where it's like, okay, and now instead of shuffling it back in, you lose. But to be fair as well, right at the start, I was like... Uh, we've got this many turns until we lose the game yeah. and we need to track this and then we immediately all stop tracking it. Yeah. Which so I, it's entirely our fault. And yeah, yeah, what I mean is if we'd repeated a bunch of scenarios up to this point where it had been a threat throughout, yeah. we would definitely be more cognizant of it. Yeah. The fact that uh, even though I mentioned it, we then all forgot about it was simply because we haven't had a chance to play the full campaign. Yeah. Because if, if we had done, I'm, I'm fairly sure that when you start the campaign, you all start with a ribbon. 
I'm fairly sure there's some you you start yeah. you, you have them and then you pick up additional ones. So yeah, exactly, it's, a, it's a lot yeah. more forgiving for you. Whereas jumping in like we did and is like right, well, good luck. Then you've got this cool added incentive where if you can complete a scenario very quickly and use less ribbons, you can save them for the next scenario. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is cool. But um, when you're doing the scenario play, which is where you just pick a scenario and it gives you some starting items and you just have a go at it. Um, you you don't have the ink ribbons and then it becomes I think a lot more race difficult. Against time. Yeah, a lot more of a race against time. And that also felt a little at odds with the theme because there is no race against time in Resident Evil Two. There are some timed sections of the game. Yeah, but that's that's entirely different. There, there's there's limited um, sections where it's really important how quickly you're doing something. Yeah. And ironically, one of the uh, the Kickstarter expansion with the alligator, the giant alligator, has a, an entire mechanic based around making the most of the time because water begins to fill an area. And either you you succeed or someone's. Good I'm just around. disappointed there was no stretch goal uh, scenario box for the uh, the shark. <laughs> oh god! I suppose the shark was good. Oh god! The shark sounds awful. Um, Zombie shark. Yeah, ima- imagine Jaws <laughs> after he got harpooned and then he came back angrier. Yeah, mm. and he's mad at you. No, but this is entirely but, Leon's uh, campaign, and that's from yeah. Jill, that's from Claire's campaign. But I but I was just going to say to you, as, with it being a board game rather than a video game, it, surely they have m- might have needed to think of a way to end the game. Yeah, no, yeah. and I I think that uh, I don't like I don't mind this mechanic at all that they've incorporated with the ink ribbons and the typewriters in the deck. I would like to think it's because it adds a sense of urgency to the gameplay. Rather than they did it just to incorporate ink ribbons and typewriters as a thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I I thought that there were maybe other ways they could have done it, but I can't think of like necessarily a better way. Mm. And I do think that it was not a fault of the game, but entirely our fault that uh, we yeah. were sort of yeah, caught out. That, that. that that was on us. We we if we'd have played up to this point, we would have deployed more intelligently. Yeah. We'd have been far more yeah. conscious of the time. Yeah. But uh, Michael, you were I was I was interesting because we were talking a bit off camera about the theme of the game as someone who doesn't know Resident Evil at all. Yeah. Um, and I thought that uh, my thinking was that if you don't know the video games, this might just seem like generic monster shooty fighty game. So um, we've played. A, I mean, there's because there are a bunch of games that feel like this. You know, the ones that come into my mind are one called um, uh, Lobotomy where you're in a, a, a haunted hospital being chased around by monsters and sort of psychos and stuff. As you do. And you're all a bit crazy, so you've got these madness mechanics going on. Another one is a game called Deep Madness, where you're on the bottom of the ocean fighting Lovecraftian-esque monsters. Mm. Um, uh, the obvious, I think, comparison as well is Mansions of Madness 2, um, yes. the second edition of Mansions of Madness, although that's app-driven, it's still a full co-op sort of monster fighter game. But I know exactly what you mean by that, with having... Played Mansions of Madness quite a few times. So, and I think the then the other game that you actually likened it to, which I thought was an interesting comparison, was uh, the other Seven Sins. And the reason that's interesting is because it's a game that simultaneously seems to have a very sort of deep lore when you look at it on the surface. Like there's all these monsters and characters who are monsters. And now I heard an interesting story later about how it was basically they had a bunch of art assets left over at Cool Mini or not, and they just took all those art assets and just tried to force a game out of them <laughs> because they wanted to use them for something. I don't know if that's true or not. Oh, I kind of want that but to be true. what's interesting is, yeah, the game does have this sort of, like, weirdness to it where you could imagine that it had come from some really well-established IP and it had all this lore and backstory that hadn't come through in the game because they'd been sort of limited in the amount of flavor and yeah. text and elements they could put in what was essentially a one-versus-many skirmish game. Um, and so what I was wondering is, but the, the, it doesn't have all that backstory. Mm-hmm. Like I said, so it does, it is kind it's of a delusionary backstory. Yeah. It's, so it did seem kind of like an oddity in that regard. And so, um, what did you think as someone who doesn't know anything about Resident Evil in terms of the theme of this? Um, because I think Resident Evil is a weird setting. It I is mean, a weird setting. I, fairness, I, it's, it gets like the, the setting changes dramatically halfway through, but, um, for me personally, I I think you would benefit a lot from knowing the game. Yeah, I mean, um, it, it literally could benefit be, or just get more out of it. it. Like more out of it. I mean, it's like I, I didn't. I enjoyed the game, uh, and I enjoy the game because of uh, how it's how it's played. The, the, like I've said, the quickness of it and and going through turns and playing the, the mechanics and, and, and the play and the co op and the theme for me could be anything. It literally, like you said, I think Manchester Madness is a really good um, comparison because that again is a co-op. 
it's monsters spawning, it's you've got this end goal, um, and you've got to do it in a certain amount of time before the monsters get you. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, yes, we could have literally been playing Mansions of Madness here for all of my understanding of Mm. the backstory and the lore and the... Which, I mean, it's a bit of a shame that they didn't come more to life for you. I mean, from my perspective, it's very hard to divorce what I already know about the series. Yeah, I so, couldn't really be objective yeah. about the theme without... So, yeah, because I, 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 see, I see this guy and I'm like, ah, oh, fantastic, they've actually All made All I remember is that scene where you come out the door and there's this corridor and it's on the outside of the police station and you can see yeah. these windows looking out over the street. You just come in and you're on the second level, and then as you're walking down this corridor, you're sort of looking for zombies, you can hear zombies shuffling around, and then you just see something crawl over the windows. And you don't know, and what, you it don't know what it is. And you don't know what it is. And you're just like, the, shit out of the fuck is that? You know. And then what happens is, as you walk down the corridor, a tongue comes smashing through the window and grabs you. Sorry, spoilers. Um, <laughs> Ew, I don't like that. Play. <laughs> and, and that's the first introduction of the lictor, and then you have to run away from the tongue as it jumps into the corridor and starts chasing you, and it's on the roof, right? Yeah. It's like crawling along the roof. Right. And you're just like, oh my god. And so for me, seeing these, that's the image I get. Yeah, yeah, but so if, you, this, if, this to me could be anything. Yeah, and yeah. that to you could be anything, and that's so that's I think I think that and I, the game doesn't do really a very good job of conjuring those images. You know, there's no where, where are the monster cards. Yeah, there are no there's no flavor text on these monster cards, which is a shame you know? because it, um, it evokes such a strong emotion. I think it, no, who's I familiar. think well, maybe, there's a missed opportunity here because these don't need to be umbrella symbols yeah these don't need to be empty backs right because you don't shuffle this you never draw a random card these are just references so what i'd like to see on the back of this card is like a stat right like a liquor is this thing right it's g virus it's evolved from this Mm. this is how it mutated this is what it does you know here are some stats about it you know it can run this fast or something you know you could give it all of these cool sort of backstory backstory flavor components i think it's very reliant on you knowing the game Yeah, yeah that's what i mean and i feel like that's lazy yeah you know I mean, maybe it's maybe they're just accepting the demographic. Maybe they're just going, the only people that are going to buy this are Resident Evil 2 fans. But it's super popular, and loads of people have played it. Yeah. And it loads the of game. People, yeah. And there's so yeah. many... Well, one, there's so many of them. And two, uh, it's, it's... The people that would buy this are people mm. who have played... And, and that is a lot of people, isn't it? It's, I, I can't work out even like whether by not Jimmy, playing the right? game would harm people buying this. It's like, look at this. Look how much empty space there is on this card. You could give me backstory. Like, what is this mutant? Is yeah. it a human? Who was he? Where how? did he come from? How where, did he get here? Where was you he know? created? You know, Why? where was he created? You know, um, and so, like, uh, it'd even be cool to have, like, a reference point for the game. Like, Leon campaign, 10 hours in. You yeah. know, something like that. Like, there's all these cool opportunities, and they just missed them all. Yeah. And it just, the thing is, it's like, even though I played all the games, I would love to have that stuff. Yeah. You know, and it feels lazy that it's not incorporated. It's, it's funny you say that, because what you were saying about the, the liquor and mm. the, the scene you had, I had exactly that moment when I opened the box and saw the crows. It's just like, yeah. oh my god. And it's... Death from above. Yeah, it's just the, the entire scene where they first come into the game. In and, two. In two. Yeah. And you just get terrified of them, and you think, oh, there's nothing I can do to stop them, and you have to really work to try to figure a way around it and I don't want to spoil it <laughs> play the goddamn game mm, but also, well the, the um, HD remake's just coming out I yeah. don't know how similar this will be to the HD remake this yeah. is clearly not based on it because yeah. they did a retro art pack this is not the retro art pack but also none yeah. of the art on this stuff seems to have come from the HD remake I mean I've yeah. only played the demo of that but because that's all that's out at the time I've dated it again but um, there the these assets seem to be sort of a made up halfway house. Yeah. You know, they're, they're new and created for this game. Yeah. So, um, and all of these scenes and things have come from the original game. I don't know how similar the HD remake campaigns in are to the original game. I know that in the HD remake, there's no fixed cameras, but we're not talking about that. Yeah. My point is that, um, I don't know how similar, if you play the Leon campaign, I don't know if the story of that in the remake is the same as the original but the story of the Leon campaign in this, which is what you've got here, the eight scenarios, yeah. have pretty much been drawn directly from his campaign in the second game. Yeah, I think the expansion, the B B files, is probably possibly going to be Claire's side of it because mm. all, all of the missions are five A, six A. So maybe it's five B, six B, and it's following Claire around. I would, yeah, I'm interested. I don't know, um, but we can have a look at it. But yeah. then a lot of the, uh, the no, but a lot of the some of the other expansions had. Um, had uh, the PvP mode where you're both playing yeah. as Birkins. Mm-hmm. So I feel like that's just like sort of the story of the Birkins and the, the, the G-Virus yeah. around it. 
I don't know. Yeah, but it's, it's, I mean, I but that, and that's that's the other thing. I'm worried that there isn't uh, as much as I love the simple gameplay. I'm worried that it might not be diverse enough to carry it through eight scenarios. Right, I see. Do yeah. you know, because there's in the core set, there are not actually that many enemy types. In fact, these are all of them. Yeah. You know, and they don't feel that distinct. No, I mean, it's it's funny because where you have, like, the liquor and the evolved liquor, the modified zombie, I know why they're there. I know what they represent, and that brings more to me for that knowledge. But otherwise it's Purely just, in terms of mechanics. Yeah, but it's it's otherwise it's just, oh, this guy's a, a harder version of this guy. That's it. That's why that's the first thing that sprung into my mind. Yeah, it's like, oh, he's got one more HP, he's got the same movement, he's got the same ag- aggression, he has an inc- almost a slightly better uh, Yeah, a slightly better um, vigor mortis move. Yeah. But otherwise he's the same. And again, yeah, this guy's pretty much the, the same, right? Yeah, um, and it's it's a shame because in the game, there was a substantial difference between them. And oh, every fight felt really, really different, you know. And yeah. um, the zombie dog, actually, the only difference, if you ignore the special attacks, which come up very rarely. Well, um, once, so, that we saw. And he didn't do it. Yeah, well, no, that's what I mean. Like, so the uh, the uh, special attacks should have come up twice in the in the gameplay playthrough that we did, yeah. even though it wasn't that long. But uh, they they were never they were so situational they never actually triggered. Yeah. And so uh, the only difference between the zombie dog and the zombie is it has one more movement. Yeah. Which, I mean, it's it's a shame because they've gone to the effort to give them these additional additional attacks that do very worrying amounts of damage to you. I also don't remember the zombie dying after making an attack in the game. I don't think it did. So I think I think the idea was it lunged at you and then as it's clawed What happened sh- was it reaction would, it shot would it lunge there. at you and then uh, like if it missed it would fall on the floor mm. and then it would lie there and then maybe get back up. Yeah. Um, I mean I I I and, think uh, but well, I would get back up eventually, but the amount of time it spent standing up was very yeah. variable. I mean, there was there's a lot of fun <laughs> moments where you could just be like, oh, all of them fell over. I'm just gonna run past them quickly. Yeah, but I'm worried that with the the setup time of the game, the eight scenarios, I'm just worried that there's not enough distinction to carry it. Yeah, yeah. you know, even like even in one scenario, <clears throat> I feel like the diversity of the enemies is not that great. Yeah, um, and it's not even that there aren't that many of them. Or it's it's that the mechanics of how they operate are not that diverse, and it's always a trade off because if you make the game simple and punchy and fast, yep. then you're limiting your scope to make things diverse, right? Yeah. yeah. But I think that uh, I think on the other hand, you know, a really well crafted design finds a way. Yeah. You know, even if it just does something simple, that really changes the way things move around. I mean, I'd I'd like to play it again. I would like to play it again. I'd like to I would like to play. It. I'd th- like to play it again, but I'm not sure if I'll keep. See, I also feel like if I play through the whole scenario, I'm not sure. The whole of, I, of the scenario book, I and don't, I don't, I, I don't sorry, know if I would want to do it again. I don't know if you are also thinking, I would like to play it again, because you know the game. Yeah. I would, looking yeah. at this, I have no qualms about playing it again, but I, I think you two would probably want to play you. it more than I would want to play it again, yeah, if that it, makes sense, because of your... Knowledge of history of it, yeah, because of our knowledge of the game. Yeah, we, I mean, we, like we for play you, to to a level. I mean, would you ever pick this over Manchester's Man to Second Edition? Never, never. Yeah, and I, I totally get why. Um, now, to be fair, Manchester's Man to Second Edition typically longer. Mm. Yes. On the one hand, if the and and, and this never is a strong word, but <laughs> but um, yeah. So I think uh, the thing about Manchester's Man to Second Edition is that it offers fewer scenarios. That, and I, d- I don't like doing these kind of comparisons because if you guys don't know the second edition of Madness, mm-hmm. Madness this means nothing to you. Yeah. But um, it's uh, because you set up the game as you play it, it's much quicker to get set up. Yeah. yeah. But if, on the other hand, then there's a bit more downtime because you have to do all of the setup during the game. So this is punchier. Yeah. Once it's you're set up to play, punch, this is yeah. faster to play the Mansions of Madness. Um, and because of the Mythos phase in Mansions of Madness, there's like it's like player, 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 or whatever, and then the the number of players, and then there's a big sort of gap where you don't really do very much, and that can really sort of boom, the flow of the game, yeah. especially if a lot happens in that Mythos phase. Well, the, whereas this is the whereas opposite. This, this is very feels punchy. It's like, good because it's so punchy. It's, it's very, person reaction. It's very tight. Person reaction. Person reaction. Yeah, yeah. I like how one turn is Persian zombie reaction, uh, tension card, next player. I also like the fact that leaving the doors open, like 
you're working together and part of that would be I need to close this area off so that this doesn't happen to the other players mm -hmm. or I forgot to close a door yeah. crap I'm being followed yeah. this active tile reaction phase thing with leaving the doors open creating mm. linked active tiles yeah. I actually thought was brilliant I really liked that it that was really really smart it was really clever um I really, really, yeah, really liked that. Yeah, for, for me, that was because the, the idea is it takes an action to close or open the door. So if there was There's no... going to be a consequence of that. Yeah if, yeah, if there was no linking, you'd be like, why would you ever close a door? Yeah. You'd yeah. only close a door when you're slamming it in the face of a zombie that's chasing you. But yeah. if, And that's that's something that's not from the game at all, I don't think, really. No, it's it's entirely yeah. on this. But I, I liked how that connected everything. Yeah. Which is it's just a shame because I like how the missions are set up and how they fit into the story, but... Mostly but because I know that's what, because how should, you know the story. Yeah, that's because I, I know how it should fit together. As much of a story. Yeah, and for that's Michael, and that's that's what worries me. Um, yeah, there is, but and I think this is the key element here. This says escape from RPD. Yeah, what is RPD? Yeah, you know, um, and what there's nothing here on this board that tells me police station. Summing up, you'd. Um, I would, I would, I would say that it's. It's playable. It has some good feel to it. If you are super into Resident Evil, I think you'll get a lot out of it. Agreed. Um, if you are not super into Resident Evil, I don't recommend it. Like, it's there's a lot of other better co-op monster fighty games, uh, dungeon crawlery type games. There's nothing that it does that's so unique and interesting that I think I need to have this one. You know, and actually, I think that the theme is not the story, and the theme doesn't grab you enough. It's too weird. It's like, hey, do you want to come around and play the Resident Evil 2 giant moth scenario? <laughs> because I, Boy, just got, I. <laughs> I just got the pack with the giant moth in it, and that's a cool new enemy that might be distinct from the others, and it's a moth. Mm. Don't you love... All zombie games have moths. Turn the lights off. They're attracted to the light. <laughs> I mean, I remember the fight with the giant moth, and I thought that, that was really like sort of weird and creepy and cool. But if you've not played the game, then that just seems so weird. Right? Oh, it's very out of yeah. Did you know there was a giant moth enemy? No. But uh, I think you and I could probably get a lot more mileage out of this because yeah. we know the game so well. So I, yeah. I think I think the thing is, I don't know what it retails at, but I don't think it's cheap either. So, And the components are not great. So I really think you have to be super into wanting to what? play Resident I mean, as far as Resident Evil board games go, this is the best one. Is this the only one? No, there are a few others. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I say that quite flippantly. I, haven't, I don't think I've actually played... All of the others, but so I, it might, might be lying. But and I, I feel that this is ending on a little bit of a, a dud. No, um, unfortunately. But I don't want to take away from the fact that a I really enjoyed this playthrough, and b um, what was slightly disappointing about it was um, not necessarily. Uh, it was more the decisions we made rather than. Uh, yeah, I mean, we 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 had a certain amount of yeah. personal responsibility for how the gameplay went. Exactly. The, and no amount of gameplay. Yeah, but I don't I feel like I don't feel like our loss marred my, my no enjoyment. Exactly, exactly, and and that's what I mean. It's like I don't want I do. I know you're saying oh people would that would know the game will probably get the most out of it. I don't disagree with that at all. But I don't want, and I probably wouldn't rush to play this again. But I don't want it to sound like I didn't enjoy it because I actually did have a good time playing this. Yeah, it's nice to play a, uh, play a full co-op every now and again. Oh, and I do like this this room difficulty chart. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Although I love the fact that going into an amber room is like the best you can do is still pretty bad. <laughs> well, but these encounter tables change based on the level of the scenario as well, which is yeah. cool. Like yeah, yeah. in the earlier scenarios, there are rolls that spawn nothing, and then on these, there's no rolls that spawn nothing. Yeah. I mean, the best you can well the the, the the best roll on a yellow table is nothing, and then everything else is bad. But um, yeah, I, I, mean, th I think that the boss fight and the behavior decks are interesting, and I'm I'm disappointed they didn't incorporate more it more. Yeah. And they do in the expansions and the extra content and stuff like that. But you know that's like um, more money. that's just like more money. And yeah. these doors and you've already spent twenty four pounds on this stuff because the tokens are so bad, you know. And it's like how much did you spend on the core set? Like sixty, eighty. Quid? I don't even know. So the recommended retail price of the game is ninety quid. You wow. can probably find it online for like seventy five, eighty quid, maybe. But that's just the base. That's just the base set, and then yeah. you spend another twenty five quid on these doors if you're lucky. I don't know. They might have even been Kickstarter exclusive. I don't know. I really hope not. So then you might not even be able to get these doors anymore. Um, and 
you get like way fewer like zombie sculpts and stuff. Like I got twice again the miniatures that come in the core set just to stretch goals. And that feels like an awful lot of money. You could get Manchester Man the second edition core set for less than that. Yeah. I mean that retails it I think. And for me, I, I think that retails about up. 80, but you can get it for like 60, 65 online. And I would pick that up. And I would pick that up for us. Um, typically. I mean, unless Ollie was here and we really wanted to do Resident Evil 2. Could have the movie yeah. on in the background. Yeah, uh, or the soundtrack. And we were playing the soundtrack earlier while I did we were like practicing, it. and that was a lot of fun. Yeah. But um, then again, Resident Evil 2, uh, sorry, Mention Madness 2 has the app, and that adds a lot of atmosphere and the story's yeah. more compelling. Yeah. yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Also, the boxes are terrible. The boxes, the boxes in the inner layers are so bad. The storage of this game is egregious. They should have provided one box that everything fits in with all the stretch goals, just like Simon do. Like, I know that it's not... I know that it's just a small thing that they do, but honestly, like, the boxes for this... Were, and most of them were just white boxes with labels printed on them. You know, they weren't even nice boxes. They were flimsy. The inlays were flimsy, and they took up so much space, and it was just bad. And now what I'm going to have to do is throw them all away and just put these things in, like, bags. Yeah. You know, or wait till uh, someone like um, Broken Token or um, or one of those other companies makes a really cool inlay and then buy that. And that's like more money I've spent after I've spent, spent money to fix the door problem. Yeah. Ah. Rant over. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> cool. Sort out your boxes. I was expecting, Forge games. to be honest, I was expecting you to just cut off the bottom inch and a half of it and just be like, right, I can double deck them now. Yeah, well, Not exactly. Now I'm going to have to just go through the inlays and just cut off, cut them up. Mm. But Join us next time when we'll be playing another exciting game. Join us for our live video of box cutting. Oh, God. Oh, I think I'm busy God. that day. <laughs> Did I agree to this? <laughs> Thanks I'm pretty sure guys. it was under duress. See you later. Bye. <laughs>